Captain Ordinary, uh, what's up, man? Wanted to shoot a quick video response to you. Uh, just a, a few points that you made in your video I, I kind of want to go over. Um, so let's get this show on the road, shall we? No amount of evidence will be sufficient. Okay, so in that case, you must not be a weak atheist. Um, you must be an atheist that knows for a fact that there is no God. That's basically what you're telling me. There will never be enough evidence uh, for you to believe that there's a God. Well, no. See, I'm not um, telling you that I know for a fact that there is no God. Your question was about belief, not knowledge. And that was kind of my point, is that belief and knowledge are completely separate. So I think it's, it's kind of odd that you would lump all that in together. You must not be a weak atheist. You must be certain that there is no God because you would never believe that there was. See, that to me, that's, that's a little bit off. That doesn't make much sense to me. Um, if there was enough evidence around, I, I think that I could draw a conclusion that there was a God. Um, well, but I, I don't think I think once there's enough evidence belief is no longer necessary really um, and no I don't think there'll ever be enough evidence for me to actually believe that the God you know that you've decided to worship is the one true only God that could exist I mean let's face it a lot of the things that you would consider to be sufficient evidence of your God um, other people uh, members of other religions would consider those same items to be uh, sufficient evidence for their God even though it's the same sort of vague evidence you know like uh, just look at the world around us just look at how perfect it all it all works look at uh, if we were any closer to the Sun you know we, we wouldn't be able to survive on this planet this is obviously an intelligent design but even if I agreed to that theory that because things are arranged in, in a particular way that that points to intelligent design, well, how do we know which designer gets to take the credit for the design? You know, uh, to me, there'd have to be enough evidence that it was this particular God in order for me to believe in that one God. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if that's what you meant to say, but... Uh, Richard Dawkins doesn't even say that. He leaves room for the fact that there might be a God. He doesn't leave a lot of room, uh, but he does leave room for that. Oh, me too, Captain Ordinary. Um, I'm by no means a Gnostic atheist at all. Uh, I, I, I can leave room for that when backed into a corner and someone says, will you just it, it, at least admit that it's possible? Well, you, I guess in some way you have to because there's no way to totally disprove that right but like uh, our friend Richard Dawkins I, I guess you could say I don't leave much room for it either because I, I don't see any good reason to at all evidence is not required to believe in something all right hold on I do not believe that is a correct statement and I don't think you believe that either um, you know uh, what do you think I believe in when I say I believe in God? Uh, do you think, do you really think that I've had no evidence uh, for myself that I've experienced to believe in God? Do you really think that you can attribute it uh, just like someone not believing in the unicorn? I don't know anybody that believes in the unicorn. Do you? But I know so many people believe that there's a God. Okay, as far as evidence um, being necessary to believe in something, up to a point. But, I mean, how much evidence do you need to the contrary before you stop believing in it? Um, after a while, the belief becomes un or irrational if there's not enough, or, or if there's evidence to the contrary of what it is that you do believe. Now, I think there's a reason that no one believes in the unicorn and that so many people believe in God uh, come on there's an obvious reason at least for me I think the reason that so many 
people believe in God uh, boils down to self-interest. It, it's in their best interest to believe that there's an afterlife because they don't want to really die. Um, it's in their best interest to believe in miracles because they want to believe that they can overcome tragic experiences in their daily lives and God makes them feel better. It makes them feel like they've got a friend to, to talk to when no one else is around, a shoulder to cry on, someone that will listen to them <laughs> or, or whatever it is. It makes them comfortable. So all in all, the reason so many people believe in God, self-interest. I think and you may say well what about all this evidence that I'm talking about Sirahan what, what about that and to that I would reply uh, what evidence because we've already talked about that there, there's no sufficient evidence for me to believe that um, and I think we live in the same world Captain Ordinary I think we're both human beings that exist in, under the same circumstances for the most part as far as the world we live in and how we perceive things we have all of the same information available to us uh, we both have enough money to have internet connections and you know stuff like that cars to drive jobs to go to access to books so I, I think we see or we have access to the same information and quite possibly to similar experiences you just interpreted your experience as sufficient evidence and I didn't to be honest when you tell a child there's a Santa Claus, they just believe it. That, that's all their belief required. It required that they were told something and they accepted it. Yeah, see, again, I, I don't personally accept that. I've never experienced Santa Claus. I don't know anybody else that has experienced Santa Claus. But I do know people that have experienced God or believe that. Well, I don't think that's entirely accurate, Captain Ordinary. I, I think you and I have both experienced Santa Claus in, in some way. I mean, haven't we? I'll say I think I've experienced Santa Claus in the same way that you experience your God. Like, remember waking up on Christmas morning as a child and seeing all of those presents under the tree? That was a Santa Claus experience. Or did you ever leave cookies and milk for Santa Claus to snack on when he stopped by your house and the next morning the, the cookies and milk would be gone and you'd see that and that was a Santa Claus experience. The times have changed, you know. No matter how many half-eaten cookies I see now, it'll never be sufficient evidence for me to believe that a guy could travel around the world on a magical sled pulled by reindeer in the span of 12 hours and drop off presents to every good little boy in the entire world. Yeah, no matter how many fucking half-eaten cookies I see, you know, it's, it's never going to be enough. It'll never be sufficient, nor should it be. And uh, I believe that that's kind of the same way you experience your God. Anyway, man, thanks for the video response, and you have a good night. Peace.